Oh, I think it's recording. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So today's video, um, I guess I'm in the frame. Today's video, I'm going to show you some stuff I was doing with uh, this other coil I just happened to have. We're going to do some more experiments with this thing later. I was just doing some tests and I filmed it on my phone so the footage isn't very great. But that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, really, really quickly, I wanted to address one thing. So last video I posted a video about giving people credit and all these things and I didn't do quite the job I was trying to, I was trying to address an, an issue and I kind of threw in a general problem that I see a lot. And so I wanted to address uh, something publicly between me and Steve, which is I have a lot of respect with what Steve uh, is doing, with what he's sharing, um, with what he's done, and I, I did not mean any disrespect in that video. So, um, Steve, I wanted to publicly say this so everyone else can see it, that I absolutely wanted no disrespect. Um, and I also did want to say that Steve absolutely um, made me view these coils um, as like capacitors and trying to charge them as capacitors. I've done a lot of these things in the past with other coils, but not looking at it correctly. And that's what I was trying to direct my vision and trying to express in the last video is that I was doing a lot of very similar things, but yes, uh, Steve does deserve direct credit uh, for making me view these things like I was trying to express them in my last couple of videos. So I apologize to Steve uh, publicly to you guys. I just wanted to put that in here because I think it's uh, the right thing to do and it's the responsible way of doing life. And you know, Steve's a good friend was a good friend. I hope he's still a good friend because I didn't mean to upset him because I really do have a lot of respect for him and I was not trying to be disrespectful. So Steve, I apologize publicly. My own decision to do that. No one forced me to do that. But I wanted to put that in here because, you know, like I said in the last video, we need to work. Everybody needs to work together. And we need to create this common goal that we have and we need to figure out our differences <clears throat> and we need to make it work. So whether you want to ever share anything with me again because I may have upset you there, I apologize. It is what it is. Life will go on. But uh, take it or leave it. I love you very much. And let's get on with the video. Enjoy this little snippet. And then we'll come back and I'll talk about it. All right. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> That's our average voltage right there. We are running on 300-ish volts. Our maximum 17 milliamps no negatives right now we are uh, <laughs> well we're cooking look at that thing it's going like crazy I am trying to recover some energy but I don't think I'm getting nothing um, Let's see real quickly about what the uh, frequency is. 9.2 hertz. Multiply by 60. I'll give you the RPM. Uh, actually, that's... What is that, about 500? Something like that. So for 10 milliamps on 9 volt batteries, we are running on this new configuration. So this is a pile of wire thousand foot long, 20 wires, so 20,000 feet of wire ish. Camera's going crazy from the magnet. Um, I kind of want to go up to the next level here. So I've got a little limit switch hitting a piece of tape. I gotta scoot back so you can actually see it without it wobbling. And the relays are doing the doing the work. Um, really briefly I'll show you what's what. So the current is in blue. Uh, the green trace is trying to measure return current but there isn't any. I'm trying to just return induced current. You can see my uh, oh, oh that's actually a little low. Oh it's on the wrong one. Hold on. Let's change this to, uh, to channel 1. There we go. So actually, yeah, so my induced voltage, maximum, of course, I guess there is some, like, if you look at the green, 
you can see there's like little fractions of return current and even in the blue so they do they do agree these are returning currents uh, I'm trying to get some induction going on here but I just can't quite get it that's okay oh come on now there you go so blue is the current going in greens the current coming back um, yellow is the battery voltage you can see it drops by what 10 20 25 volts pretty pretty big really milliamps uh, 10 20 30 40 50 55 a little peak but actually it's it's cruising man I need to get it above I need to get it I need to go faster I'm gonna try higher voltages to see what happens but it's cooking cooking with fire again our average is actually slowly going down could be the battery dropping 8 milliamps out of all those batteries let's reset it Fourteen milliamps max. Anyway, I think I'm gonna pump up the voltage, man. Want to? It might fly off the rockers. There is nothing holding those two magnets together, except for themselves. I'm not quite sure how fast we can spin it. I had it up to a thousand RPM by hand, so it should be all right. That's somewhere around five hundred. Okay, I added just one bank of 100 volts here. Under 10 milliamps still. And this thing is booking. It's wobbling pretty good. My batteries are going to fall off here if I'm not careful. These are running, this is running the relays. I forgot to tell you that. The relays are being triggered by the limit switch. And the relays, uh, well, the relays are doing this. That's how it's connected. Anyway, I'm going to go up some more. Let's show you the scope shot real quick. It's actually, I mean, I could probably... Look at that. I'm actually inducing quite a bit. And don't forget this green was on only on 2 milliamps. But, look at the batteries. See the little spikes in the battery? I need to get, I, I want to get even to a higher frequency here. Okay, let's go up to the next one. Let's let's do it. Want to? Let's do it. All right, I just connected another hundred volts just to see what would happen. We're still at the same milliamp, but we did add one more bank. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to jump up. Kind of tempted to jump up. I I want to be above this frequency. I really want to be. Yeah, higher than that. There's the bi or the yeah bi filer windings, and uh, yeah, actually, it's running pretty good. And something interesting happens when I disconnect it. You hear the RPM? It took a while for it to slow down, even though it's got a lot of mass. The recovery diodes are feeding the circuit. The induction from the device is feeding the circuit. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go up. I hope those things don't fly off. Okay, I just connected it. It's actually like super speeding up right now. Uh, we're still only pulling 10 milliamps average. I probably need to reset that actually. Oh, we we are pulling more. I lied earlier. I didn't reset the meter so it was still averaging. It's about 32 milliamps now. Um, at 600 volts. That thing's cruising. It's actually going down. You know what? I'm not so sure anymore. I'm going to have to let it settle out. We'll see what it says. Let's check the scope real quick. Let me get it set though. Wow. Check that out. I'm finally running fast enough to use the trigger on the scope. That might be the first time I've used the trigger on the scope in a long time. Everything's always just free running there. 
Um, yeah, the thing's cruising. It's settled out. About 30 milliamps. Yeah, it's still going down a little bit. Yeah, that thing is, uh, flying. But the relays are still going, so I guess we'll go up to, uh, we'll add another 300 volts. Why not? Okay. Here we go. Uh oh. Overvolting jar meter down there. Okay. Wow. I'm actually a little concerned about that. I don't think those magnets will come off there, but. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. My limit switch moved. Dag nabbit. I just got it clamped on here. I guess I'll fix it a little better and we'll try this again. That is freaking crazy though. It's alright. Let's try it again. Okay. So. I had this extra piece of tape on there so it fired for a long period of time. I took it off. This thing seems to be a little out of balance. Uh, also, earlier my meter may have been on AC, so this is the correct measurement right now. It is on DC milliamps. The average is less than 10. And we have all of our batteries connected, so that's uh, almost 900 something volts. Actually, we can look at what the battery voltage is over here. Yeah, just above 900 volts. And our maximum for the purple there, which is across the coil, is only about 600 and something. So there's no current spike. I'd like to be going faster, but I slowed it down using a smaller trigger time because the thing's going to fly apart. So yeah, anyway, just messing around here, trying some different ideas, and uh, see what happens. Thanks for watching. Okay, so hopefully uh, that wasn't too shaky of a footage. Um, what I want to do uh, in the future here soon is I want to I want to uh, I want to characterize this coil with the impedance analyzer. Um, I have a demo board impedance analyzer I've been using for lots of things. It doesn't work great at low frequencies or high frequencies. It's sort of a mid mid range. It's like a test board unit, and uh, I want to characterize what happens when you connect coils in bifilar fashion in series like this. What happens to the impedance curve, and look at how the um, capacitive reactive uh, capacitive reactance and inductive reactance changes. And uh, I posted something on the forums where you can see the the curve and all this stuff. But we'll get into that in the next video. So. Thanks for watching, and I uh, really appreciate everybody's effort, everybody's help, everyone who's put anything into this thing. And uh, yeah, love you guys. Read the Bible more. Thanks for watching. Uh, I've been really, really, really busy on just so many things, and so I'm trying to uh, demonstrate to myself these principles and share what I can with you as I learn them. So that's all I can do. Peace out. Bye.